lawsuit when you signed Antonio Brown? I'm not going to be expanding on the statements that have already been given. Don't you think the fans deserve to hear a little more from you on well, we know more, we'll say more. That, you know, could impact the team? Yeah, I just said that. Don't you think fans deserve to hear a little bit more? Well, we know more, we'll say more. Are you preparing to have Antonio Brown practice today? Yes. And are you preparing for him to play on Sunday? We're taking it one day at a time. Are you just like we always do. Preparing for the possibility uh, that he could be on the commission. We're preparing for we're preparing for one day at a time. How much weight would the allegations against him weigh into whether or not we play him on Sunday? Yeah, I appreciate all the questions, and that's what's been said has been said. Anybody know how AB's doing? Hey, how's AB doing? Is he okay? What's going on? Hi. Hey, how, how about that AB? How about that Antonio Brown? How about that Antonio Brown? How about that AB, man? Everybody knows how he's doing? Oh, man. Oh, look at that. They're trying to tell me. He's trying to tell me certain things. Okay, buddy. Okay. All right. You know, that's the kind of week two I was having. Welcome, everyone, to the little show. That's the kind of week we're having here in the league. I mean, we're just hearing Carter nonstop nauseating rhetoric about fucking Antonio Brown. Yeah, we were busting on balls a little bit. We were. We were saying that you're asking for a, a running back one for a wide receiver that got suspended and going to a Patriots team that we all know from history, they share the ball. It's very rare, especially for a guy that wasn't in, he wasn't with them at camp or any other preseason. He's just showing up, and you're just telling me that, okay, that's worth Dalvin Cook. That's worth a, a, a top-tier running back that you're going to start. You're not going to take Adrian Peterson for Antonio Brown. He's a running back one. But, you know, that's that's just the world of Carter. I mean, that's just how he gets down. Personally, I didn't watch a lot of football this weekend. I wanted to. It was single life for me. Single life when you don't have parents, when you don't have a wife or a girlfriend taking care of your kids. Guess what? Guess who gets the burden of that? Yes, yours truly. And I was doing that for quite a bit because I'll be going out of town. So, therefore, and, you know, speaking of out of town, uh, and I'll go into that later, but, yeah. So I had, you know, I had to take care of those duties, man, of, of being a dad. And when you're a dad with a nine-year-old, uh, I think the choice of watching a mermaid movie versus sports is going to be a very easy one for her. And for all you fucks out there that are telling me that being married, being single and all this stuff is better, it would have kicked fuck out of here. When you're married, you have a 24-hour, seven days a week babysitter. Now, granted, can you go to Vegas on a weekend? No, you probably can't. But can you can you go ahead and, and get out to Gasparilla or Key West, you know, for some time? No, you can't. But you can go out every fucking Saturday night for two, three hours and watch games. You can go and watch and just leave for a few hours. And as a married man, you need that outlet. See, I can speak from both sides. See, most of you guys can't because most of you guys don't remember the last time you were fucking single. Like all you guys are married, happily married, I must say. Shout out to the wives, the happy wives that make you all happy. Or you've been in a relationship one after the other. You don't have any breathing room, bro. You know, I, I'm living this solitude life, and I love it. Like I always tell people before I get into this, man. It's like I, I got asked one time, man, would you do it again, man? Would you get married again? I'm like, look, I've gotten my Achilles ruptured not once but twice. I would gladly jump out of your fucking townhouse on the second floor and re-rupture it again and break some bones before I legally marry again. I'm not doing it again. Sorry. That's not in the cards for me and jesus you know and for the people that are happy doing it hey good for you but hey but that's one of the perks you fucks that you have when you're married which all of you are happily married shout out to the wives that are listening checking in on your husbands making sure that nothing crazy is being said because this is all about fantasy football fantasy football all day every day so stop snooping around but it was a very interesting week from what i saw uh, you have some pretenders and contenders. Are the Ravens contenders? Is uh, the 0-2 Steelers now with 
Big Ben being out for the year, that's going to take a big hit. You have Drew Brees being out for six weeks. Is Teddy Bridgewater the real deal? Is he the reason why they signed him for a seven million deal? Right. There's just so many headlines as we are going on. Is Adrian Peterson going to get the touches that he should? <laughs> because Coach Gruen is not helping the cause over there. You know that Coach Gruen situation reminds me a bit of. Before I get into the scores here, it, it reminds me a bit of when there are certain coaches that are very stubborn about their system. Aaron Rodgers and that coach, I don't even know his name. They're they're just so stuck on their system. And when you have guys that have had more success than you, uh, Adrian Peterson is a Hall of Famer. Aaron Rodgers is a Hall of Famer right now. When those guys are around and you're trying to win a championship, this is just me. If I was a coach, if I had a guy like that, I'm like, you know, Aaron, get get in here in the offseason. Let's create the playbook around your skill set about whatever it is you want done. I want to incorporate some of the things. I may sprinkle some things I may want to do that I think that can be done better, but I want this offense to be 80% you. I'm not going to go ahead and have you try to figure out a new offense here in your 12th year with a wristband and your fucking forearm. And then we're fucking arguing on the sidelines about you know what guy sh- what read I should have had on the play. I'm not, you know, that's not the way I want to have my guy, the guy that I'm relying to win a championship with be active. That's just but again, I mean these coaches, there's ego, ego involved. And that's going to be something at the end of the day, those coaches are not going to be Hall of Famers. Those players are. But it was a very very interesting week for sure. As I look at the first matchup here, you look in let me see. Sorry, man. I mean, this is just really weird, man. Like I said, I'm on the road. I just dropped off my daughter in school. I'm going to the chiropractor to get my back checked out. And, you know, the Wi-Fi just sometimes has a mind of its own or just whatever internet connection. It's crazy. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm pressing enter. Hello. Let me see the box score. Jesus Christ, dude. It's like it's still thinking. I don't know. I may have to come back to this. Hold on for a second. Finally. Okay. This was, uh, you know, one thing that I was talking to MVP about was it it was the just the difference of the start of the season that we I want to say we only had one person or two people. We haven't had the lightning, like the the crazy scoring that we had there at the end of last year. You know, everyone was scoring 100 points. Everyone was just scoring 140. It was just crazy. And it seems like I, the, the season has not gotten off to a blazing start for a couple teams that did. And one of them was Diesel uh, with uh, as he beats MVP 124 to 94. And Mahomes obviously just, I think he's having a historic year, um, or historic stretch. Uh, it's something that I, I was uh, listening to one of the announcers talk about that. The pace that he's in for his first 15, 16 games, whatever it is, regular season games, it's something that uh, obviously it's more because he's, he's played two more. But the stretch that he's in is unbelievable, and he's continuing that. I, I hedged my bet on that as well uh, as I got him in another league. But uh, Mahomes just doing some savage work there. Groom was saying he was throwing some bombs everywhere. 44 points. Barkley obviously doing what he's supposed to do with 19. Ingram. Uh, but, you know, Lamar Jackson is, is stealing the show over there in Baltimore with 7.7. But he's going to be their bell cow. Evan 6.1, you know, Tampa Bay, whatever. Really came through. That was a that was a crazy scoring game over there in Philly, especially at the end there. Pretty interesting. Uh, Matty Ryan is so underappreciated, and I think he's always fine under the radar. Uh, but overall, man, 124 points when you have Tucker, most reliable kicker, and, I mean, you still had Kirk on the bench. But, you know, all you had was Mahomes, Barkley, and really to kind of carry you and Tucker. To, to do damage and MVP. I mean, you had 94 points with Brady out there doing his thing, and with Antonio Brown just showing, making it, making it a point that hey, you know what? I got Antonio Brown, and this is how it's gonna be going forward. And I think the league is in big, big trouble. I think uh, when it comes to the AFC, um, uh, hopefully Antonio Brown doesn't have any issues happen to him. But if he's able to keep all his pieces, meaning New England and Brady then they're going to be just fine. I mean, uh, I'm excited to go see them and see what it's all about. David Johnson let you down. Uh, you have uh, Mr. Jackson, 
I don't even know who that is. Uh, Jay Jackson for the Chargers. Is that is that, is that the, the backup for the, the the Chargers when that Melvin Gordon situation happening? Then you have Brandon Cooks there, 11, you know, 13, and uh, Edelman, 5. And, again, I mean, I just go back to that whole uh, Brady's going to spread the wealth. So there's going to be games where Edelman's going to have 5, and other games he's going to have 17, 18. Kelsey came through, 17. You know, that's just the way he's going to do things. And now, especially with Tyree Kell being out of the mix, uh, he's going to be uh, obviously getting some of the touches and some of the scoring here in fantasy football. Josh Gordon's going to be a casualty of Antonio Brown. Is he talented? Absolutely, but we have to see how that works out. And the Chargers, you know, the defense was in a bad pick there as you went to Detroit. And but 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 it's just again, it wasn't enough. 94 points, uh, you know, solid effort here at the beginning. And you left some points on the bench with John Ross, which is something Greg was telling me about. He wanted me to pick him up, and I think he's going to be scorching. So you may consider him at least as a flex option, depending on the matchups. And uh, McLaurin, I don't even know who that is. Maybe that's the that's the the, the running back that Gruen is pushing a, a, against JP. I don't know. You know, it's just kind of again, it's just sad to see that. You know, and Adrian Peterson. I'll go into this real quick. That I, I feel he's a guy. And you know, we all play sports, and we know that when we play with guys that you earn, they earn your respect. Meaning that Adrian Peterson is a guy that I think is very evident that he's earned his teammates' respect as far as his talent at this age, the work ethic, the the things that he does for the guys in that locker room to feel, okay, this guy should get a shot. And, the, he, you know, some guys did mention that they felt AP was slighted. He took it like a professional. He came in, and they stopped going to the run. I don't – again, I just don't understand coaches that don't want to utilize – if I was a coach and I had Adrian Peterson, I'm fucking giving him 20 touches. Now, if he if he's 20 touches, 70 yards after a couple games, then we – obviously, that speaks for itself. But I have, but when you're giving him, you know, eight catches, you know, eight, eight, nine carries, and he's gotten you, you know, he's averaging, at, you know, five or six in a touchdown, it's like, all right, you know, you got to you gotta use that. But, again, some coaches just get stuck in their system, in, in their ideology, and when someone doesn't fit that, even though that guy is talented in the Hall of Famer, they just don't want to go there. All right. You know, you're, you're the professional coach. You know, I can't be complaining about it, but congratulations there. Diesel, uh, it was a great win. I mean, you have a great team. I think you have the the best team in, in the league. So, once again, you're doing some damage here with a good outing. Next up is uh, Rough Buff Matty. The battle of the BFFs versus Team Up for Blood. The combination of Marlowe and uh, Wedlock. And, you know, Matty doing his thing. He's trying to show that he's the real deal. And he, he believes in Matty Ryan like I do. Good for him. He's got 31 points. Dalvin Cook, I think he's going to be the guy. You know how you always have that player that just has a shitty sophomore year, has like a, a, a shitty year in general, and then all of a sudden they come back and they kind of fall in the fantasy draft. Like they maybe should have been a solid first round and they end up being like a late second rounder or something like that. You know, not in our league, of course. But that's uh, Dalvin Cook to me. Dalvin Cook is that guy that – we just kind of fell off everyone's radar, and you know he had the potential, but he just didn't live up to it. You know, Burke would have gotten him. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, you know, he went ahead. Matty pulled out a win, and, you know, obviously with Team Out for Blood being handicapped, not having uh, Melvin Gordon, you know, that's always going to be the interesting headline this year with Le'Veon Bell claiming he won. I don't know if you saw that, but he said he, he, he won the battle. You know, I don't know what he won, but I, I think you could say he won his health. He did get a contract. But to say that he won by going to the Jets versus the Steelers, I don't know. I don't know. And, you know, I wish him the best, but I, I don't know. I think, but it's it's just like LeBron. You know, when you have one guy fall on the sword and it sees that it has some benefits to that decision, then other players are going to follow suit. And I think that Le'Veon Bell, we're going to have this every year where a running back that just kind of plays above the contract goes ahead and sits out the next year because they want to get paid. I don't blame them, to be honest with you. I don't blame the, the athletes trying to get it. They have to monetize their value, especially in the early years. Especially, in, you know, a position like, like a running back, you're either going to hit it out of the ballpark or not, meaning that you're going to be a stud right away or you're not. 
very rarely do you have these guys that pan out after a few years. I'm not saying there aren't cases, but generally speaking, when you're a, a, a high uh, round pick of a running back and you hit it off, you're going to be fine. Outside of injuries, you're going to be just fine. Right, yeah, and I think that's uh, the case with Melvin Gordon. But unfortunately for you, team out for blood, you don't have him. So you had to start Chris Thompson, and he didn't do anything for you. Uh, you had Galladay. He had 18 points. Your receivers did some work. That was really good with 18.7 and 13.6. Greg Kittle was okay, even though the 49ers are are they pretenders at 2-0? I mean, they beat Tampa Bay and Tampa Bay, and then they went to Cincinnati and beat them in Cincinnati. I don't know. Or did they play in Cincinnati? I don't even know, but, man, I thought they did. Because I saw a fan, <laughs> shout out to Barstool Sports, they put a video out of a fan texting. And you know how when you're old, like, you, you go ahead and put your texting, like, the, the font, like, to 20, so that it takes up the whole screen? Like, I know you're old when I can see you texting from across the bar, you know? Hey, you know... That you're just trying to be cool, like you're not trying to wear glasses, and you're just going to go ahead and put the font real fucking big so everyone can see it. That's exactly what happened to this guy at the game, and he was ranting away about the Andy Dalton being, you know, he wanted to kill Andy Dalton. I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> it's only a game. It's only a fucking game. When you realize it's only a fucking game, you got to calm the fuck down. But this guy did not, and Garoppolo went ahead and uh, doing some good work over there, so... But, you know, no matter what I'm saying here, I mean, when you get in a zero from Drew Brees, a zero, and, and not because of his talent, because of an injury, you, you're you going to have no shot at winning. So this is one of those losses that I'm not going to give you a hard time about because you 78 points, but, man, when Drew Brees doesn't come through, you're at least good for 20 to 30. Even though Maddie would have won technically, you didn't leave any bench, you know, points on your bench. Well, maybe the running back position, but that would have probably, what, saved you maybe 15 points. So, you know, you're not looking. It would have been a close one. It, it definitely would have been a close one, but I think uh, Matty would have pulled it out, man, as he, he has some good damage going in. Julio Jones looking good sprinting out there. Keenan Allen, okay. You know, as long as he doesn't get hurt, he's all right. And I think uh, looking at your roster, Matty, I mean, it looks pretty darn good. Uh, Fitzgerald on the bench of 11.4 and Stafford. I mean, so you you got a solid team here, buddy. You know, I I, I took a, a script out of your playbook, man. I just show up and draft and get the fuck out. I like that. But uh, you did a really good effort here with 120, and I mean, all around. I mean, Matty Ryan again. I mean, I'm always banking on Matty Ryan. I don't know what it is. I mean, he's a solid quarterback, very underrated. But uh, you, you did some damage. So kudos to you, Matty, and to to team up for blood. I mean, you got to get your shit together. Not only you have Melvin Gordon now, but now you're going to have Drew Brees out for a bit, and you don't know uh, when that situation is going to be uh, remediated. It, it sucks, but that's fantasy football for you, but good luck with that. Next up, you know, it's uh, Art, the brains of the formerly known as, uh, you know, the combination of, of the Jaguars. What was the team name, by the way? I forgot. What was the fucking team name? I don't even know. What's the team name? Let me see. They, 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 I don't even know. You know, yeah, Mighty Jags, that's right. You know, he went ahead and franchise size. When I'm winning, I win. I like that. And you got 102 points against Burke. Uh, you know, the closet uh, closeted FSU guy. Uh, any any FSU guys starting for you, Burke? Let me see. Uh, I don't think so. Unless you got any Gators. You know, no Gators are starting for you. <laughs> well, unless Cam Newton was a former Gator, then he – uh. Got caught with some laptops out there in Gainesville, you know. eBay, dude. eBay. You know, you, sh you should have got them on eBay, bro. You should have went ahead and got those things, put them on eBay, and, and send them out, man. And sold them to somebody over in uh, fucking Russia, you know what I mean? You would have been just fine. <laughs> International sale, just fire sale. You know, that's what they do in the hood, by the way. I, I know you guys don't know much about this. You guys are very affluent gentlemen that had very privileged backgrounds and you know what they do in the urban environment when you steal shit you gotta go to the pawn shops drop that thing off but the cops figured it out now the cops go there when something gets stolen they go to the pawn shops man i don't know you know maybe you know i'm just lying i i, I just uh, maybe watch too much csi but okay let me just get back into this game but yeah burke uh, 82 points uh 
you know, it's a solid. If, if you look at your roster with Gurley, Mitchell, and Thomas, Zach Ertz, you did your job. But Cam Newton, is is this the end for Cam Newton? Are we seeing the very end of him? One one person in the panel that I was seeing talk was saying that because of the way he's dressing, it's a sign that he's losing his mojo, Cam Newton. So he's saying that because he's not able to exude that mojo on the field anymore because he's not what he used to be, that now he's doing it with his fashion. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, when you love conservative talk like that, by the way, this guy was black, uh, uh, Jason Whitlock. <laughs> you know, it's like the old man mentality, like that you have to look a certain way to be productive. And, I, I, I mean, I don't get that. Cam Newton is just uh, – it's one of those guys that it, it, it's the mindset for me is you can start off with legs in the NFL. When you're a quarterback, you can start off with your legs, but eventually your arms have to be better than your legs at some point. It, it doesn't matter who it is, whether it's Michael Vick, whether it's McNabb, whether it's Steve Young. At some point, especially if you're a guy that is not going to protect yourself, yeah, you you know that at, at some point your arms have to be better than your legs and. Cam Newton is getting to that point now where now, buddy, your arm has to be your accuracy, your pocket presence, making the smart decisions. Being a drop-back quarterback is more important than using your legs because, you know what, you're you're not this problem. You know, Take a playbook out of Big Ben. Big Ben is a big dude, but he stays in that pocket. He's hard to bring down, and that's what he should be looking at to get done because, I, I don't know, I mean, when you're losing at home against Tampa Bay – that's just not a good sign of things to come. I mean, hopefully it doesn't affect McCaffrey, but at the end, Cam Newton is not who we thought he is, especially this year. But at the end, it's plenty of football to be played. Didn't matter if you would play Jameis Winston, Burke. Uh, you still would have been stuck. Now, that trade with that Prescott would have been a different story. Holy cow. And I think that was a really good trade. That was a win-win for both parties because – I think the way A-Train was pulling that was, you know, and I've talked about that before, about just streaming quarterbacks, and, and now uh, you got one of his guys. And I think uh, Prescott's playing for a contract. That's exactly what's happening here. He's playing for that $40 million fucking salary. That's what he's playing for. So I think that I, I would say you got to play him just because of that edge. He's trying to prove to the Cowboys, I'm worth this money. And I, I, I'm a I'm a big gambler on guys on contract years. That's that that's just my personal opinion. When it's a guy that is having a stalemate and he's reading, you know, he's reaching a contract year. I, I think like like a Flacco, you know, just putting the, the the bet on himself and saying, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and get this money at the end of the day, and I'm gonna show you why. I think that Preska is doing the same thing. So. Um, that's something to kind of consider as you move forward, Burke, because I don't think Cam Newton is going to be that guy. But for Art, I mean, uh, when, when you have Carson Wentz putting 23, your running backs didn't come through, uh, Mixon and Fournette, uh, Thielen. I mean, they had a rough outing there in Green Bay. It was, uh, wasn't it? Weren't they Green Bay? Yeah, they were Green Bay. And uh, that, that, that was something that you know was going to be tough because Green Bay's defense looks a little bit better this year. Tyler Boyd doing well for you. Andrews, which is the tight end, I mean, he's doing some great things in Baltimore. And uh, Devin Henry, I think that's a, that was a great steal. That was one that I was looking at Art uh, in the later rounds, so our fourth round in particular. I want to say you got him a little bit earlier, so I thought that was a good pick. But overall, man, I mean, you're looking pretty solid. I mean, you have a good team. Even though your running backs let you down, uh, you know, you were able to pull it out with, with just the firepower of your quarterback and your receivers, your tight end, and your flex. So, because I'm looking at Boyd, Andrews tight end. Thielen, no, Thielen didn't come through. Yeah, you know, you, you just have a good team overall, right? You just have a good team. Don't worry about it. Good job, man. Congratulations. Next up on the lineup here. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm dragging through this a bit much, man. I'm trying to give everybody their just due, you know? And, you know, Category 4 didn't get his. And he was just bragging about it a little bit too much. And I thought, Paul, you know, it, it's disappointing to see you drop off the grace. You know, you're always going to have a special place for me in the run you had last year. But it seems that uh, you coming coming back down to earth, the league figured you out. They figured out what you're all about. And when you're scoring 75 points and barely squeaking one out, just lets me know how shit of a job Carter did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, you know, Carter, I mean, 13 points from Watson. McCaffrey, 5.3. Antonio Brown, Antonio Brown, Antonio Brown. Hell, how about that Antonio Brown? 12.1, 11.6 for Tyrell Williams. Waller, 7.3. Zero for Deshaun Jackson. Zero for Matt Prater. I mean, and I see some zeros on the bench. Jesus fucking Christ, Carter. <laughs> you got hit by Category 4. <laughs> Jesus. What the fuck is going on there? That's an ugly game. I mean, that's a, that's a terrible recap. I'm sorry, guys. But, you know, for you, uh, you know, Paul, uh, Baker Mayfield, he was doing some good things there on Monday night. Le'Veon Bell, the fumble kind of hurt you there. Um that was, uh, but, but he's doing good. I think he's going to be just fine, you know, uh, over there. And, and he's going to be one of those guys. He's not going to be crazy, but he's going to give you 12 points, 10 to 12 points. I think we could bank on Bell doing that. Uh, and Carlson, I mean, doing the same thing, you know, just fumbling away over there in Seattle. But, you know, your receivers did good. Your tight end got you a zero. Denver defense, what was that about? Man, that last minute in Denver – Holy fucking shit. Was that something else or what? And crazy. Incredible. Um, you know, to see that kind of game happen, that's just kind of why you love the NFL. And, you know, when you, you hit that kick, man, man, that's just fucking incredible, man. The guys had every chance to, <laughs> to lose the game, and they did not. It, you know, the, the referees are, are magical sometimes, but then the players are even magical when they make really dumb plays like that. But... You know, Paul, I mean, congratulations. You, you grinded this one out. It was really special to see, so I'm, I'm really happy you got this one off and you were able to calm down the, the pre-ejaculating Carter on his uh, possible win that he was thinking he was going to have. Good stuff. Now, you look at this. I mean, look at this ass kicking going on here. Donnie, you know, he's kind of like um, – he's a little bit like Jason Witten. He's like, ah, I'm retiring and then coming back and then retiring coming back. You know, this is one of those games where he's going to be like, you know, I need to go back in the booth. <laughs> I need to go back to go ahead and uh, calling a shitty game. You know, calling a, a, you know, calling it out shitty skills. Because, man, Jason, they, Jason Wynn was terrible at the booth, by the way. Terrible. So I was glad to see him back in football. So he's always glad to see you back, Donnie. But, yeah, you know, uh, A-Train, I think he is the dark horse right now of the league. I, I think uh, him getting Lamar Jackson – and having the team that he has with Odell Beckham, with Chubbs, with Breda, uh, you looking at Lockett on the flex, you looking at the, the kicker looks. I mean, he's going to be getting more opportunities now with Breeze being out. You know, with the thing about the kicker in New Orleans, you're always worried about because he's either going to get you four points because they're scoring 28 points. You know, he's getting his extra points. Or at this point now, hopefully with Bridgewater, he'll get more threes, right? Cleveland defense. You know, I gave you a hard time about picking Cleveland, but, you know, it's paying off on Monday night, bro, on the road. The Cleveland defense is doing some damage. And there's, I mean, Hawkinson, I mean, you, Hawkinson, you had to put him in because your main tight end was uh, struggling. And I don't know, it seemed like they were not doing anything over there. Who did Detroit play, by the way? They played the Chargers, right? That's right. Who that's what they played? And they didn't do anything. But, man, you left some, uh, you know, points on the bench. But it's a hard decision, isn't it? When you have Chubb, when you have Breda, and, you know, you have Jones on the bench, you have Freeman on the bench. Oh, God, dude. I mean, it's, a, it's just a good look. Good, this is a good look for you, buddy. I mean, you, you put in some work. And I think that uh, that trade, you, you did some really good things, getting Lamar Jackson. And you were and, – and I always go back to this, man. I mean, you, you know, people – Burke was trying to give me a hard time about, you know, stacking up on running backs. But I, I believe you have a bunch of running backs. You can get some pieces in return that will help you balance your team out. And you hope that whatever running backs you pick, and I think A-Train took that playbook and went ahead and helped himself with having Lamar Jackson, which is looking to have one of those Patrick Mahomes years. And, and hopefully he does. Hopefully he does because, um, you know, that's the guy that has, again, a chip on his shoulder mentality. Not because of contract, because everyone's thinking that he plays like a quarterback. But he doesn't run. He runs when he has to, and he's very smart. That's one thing I will give him about. Like, he runs, but he's not like Robert Griffith or Michael Vick where they're just running. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking strong. You know you're going to get pounded by the linebacker, so just slide. 
run out of bounds, you know. Like, you know, you juke here, but then you get out, you know, you see them two, three big boys coming, just slide. Just get the fuck out of the way. You're not going to win that one. You know, I'll never understand these videos on social media where the guy is standing under underneath the rim and he's trying to block the guy coming full steam ahead has you know has has the momentum and you think you're going to block him that's not going to happen you know that's it. more times than not you're going to have dunked on if if someone is asking me to do that challenge I'm like okay I'll let you run but I also got to run too like I got to run from the sideline from the baseline sideline and you go ahead and run and then we'll meet at the goal and see what happens but I'm just not going to stand there and then have you have a four-second head start of momentum and thinking I'm going to go ahead and block you. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, you know, these great athletes don't have that type of momentum. And if they do, uh, you know, they, it's a highlight reel. So, you know, I, I'll never understand that. But anyway, I just ranted off there for no reason. But, yeah, congratulations, A-Train, on the win. I mean, I think you really look good. And I think uh, you have a great team coming up. So I'm re really looking forward to that. And last but not least, but, uh, you know, sweet Ron. You know, Ron, I, I got to say, I was a little pissed off. You coming into the chat and, uh, you know, if I would have started New England defense and, you know, if I would have done this, if I would have done that, man, I would have had the high scoring team in the league for the second week in a row. It's such hyperbole. It's such hypothetical. It's you are such a crock. It's like, yeah, you know, duh. If I would have drafted, duh. If I would have drafted certain guys, yeah, duh. Yeah, I would have had the best team in the league, duh. But I did not, duh. It's just weird. It's, it's like, come on, Ron. I get it. You know, we all make bad decisions on game day. We all do. You got to live with it. And I'm one of those losers. I got to live with my loss against you. Even though you were complaining, oh, woe's me. You were doing the Lou Holtz. You know how Lou Holtz used to go to the press conference and before the play game, oh, geez, you know, that Miami team, man, they're just so tough. I don't know if we're going to beat them. Oh, man, you know, USC, they're just so unbelievable. I don't know what to do. It's just, oh, man, golly, man. You know, he's just kind of like, just just kind of like, just low playing it. I, I, that's how you are. You, you're trying to sandbag the whole approach, man. And I don't like that. That, that. that pisses me the fuck off a little bit. You know, I just had to run away. I'm sorry. Another long one here, guys. I, I I feel like I'm doing a work podcast. <laughs> you know, like we we get on that horn and we drop a knowledge to the to to the people out there, but this is supposed to be entertaining. So this is definitely past attention span mode, you know. But anyway, uh, you know, I will say that for my end, uh, Greg left the keys. He he left the keys for the car for me to drive. And he was out uh, working on a, 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 a lo another civil pen, you know, class action lawsuit. I, I think he's doing a, a big class action lawsuit against something. You know, he, who knows what the fuck it is. You know, he, he tries to masquerade it as something personal. It's like, nah, motherfucker, you're doing some class action lawsuit. So that's all you lawyers fucking do. And, but anyway, he left me to run the car, to run this ship. And, and I just fucked it up big time. I don't think I could have done any better. Because I'm looking at my bench and it's horrible. Horrible. And Camara didn't show up. Freeman didn't show up. And with Big Ben being out, I don't know how Juju Smith-Schuster is going to be. I don't know. Do I plug him in for downtown Brown or Hollywood Brown, whatever they call him? I don't know. Vance McDonald came through. Tight, situa tight end situation was uh, figured out for a week. But that's it. You know, I, 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 Nothing special here. 89 points. I know how to pick a defense. And... I mean, they put up their points, but everything else, eh, you know, 89 points, you're not going to win in this league. And, you know, sweet round for you. I, I, you know, you have Singletary come through. Uh, it looks like that's going to be their guy eventually out there in Buffalo. Godwin looks like the main receiver now. He's basically playing the Juju Smith-Schuster role uh, with um, Mike Evans being Antonio Brown. So I think there's going to be a lot of benefit to that. And I think that O.J. Howard, maybe, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think Cameron Bray, I like Cameron Bray in Tampa better. But, you know, O.J. Howard, it's a stud. Eckler is going to be doing just fine as Melvin Gordon sits out. And he did a horrible job of picking the defense. I mean, what what else can, can you do? But, yeah, you know, if I would have just went ahead and picked the – I don't know why I didn't pick the Dolphins. You know, a little worse. Oh, I didn't pick the Patriots there. You know, I, 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 you just got me so all right, dude. You know, I, I just can't – I can't root for you now. You know, this week – and I'm just going to close out. But congratulations, Ron, 
on that one. Uh, you know, this week was a very frustrating one because it was seeing Carter just complain or just kind of try to throw it in people's face, right, about Antonio Brown. And it's fucking unbelievable. Like, you know, who the fuck cares about that? You know, yeah, you got him. He, he got off for a week. Try to do that for 12 more weeks, all right? Let's see what happens. And then, you know, Sweet Ron just coming in, man, you know, kind of fucked up there, man. You know, I should have won. I should be the best team in the league. If I plug in the nice guys, the right guys, I should win every time. No fucking shit. No fucking shit. If you play the right guys, if you draft the right guys, you're going to fucking win. Jesus Christ. All right, I got to, you know, I'm just uh, leaving this chiropractor appointment here. You know, I did this podcast while dropping off my daughter, going to the chiropractor, and driving back here. As I get back, I got to get some work done. But, um, yeah, I got to get out of here. But, yeah, good week, boys. Let's keep this thing going. And I can't guarantee you a podcast on a timely basis for next week. I'm going to be out and about. But I try my best, so figure it out until then. And I asked my girl, and she's like, babe, it's been my dream since I was three years old. Okay, when I was three years old, I wanted a dragon. (laughs) Sometimes your dream is not really, you know what I mean? It's not a great dream. It's not feasible. I still dream of being in the NBA. How about we run out Madison Square Garden, invite all our friends and family over, and I dunk on them for eight hours. What about my dreams? I'm just saying there should be something for men. You can, honestly, I'll let you have the party. That's just for you. But something to balance out the ring. I think men should get engagement cars. Just a simple, look how unhappy the women are at the idea. It's not even equal. A diamond is for every, a Camry is like six years. It's a whole different timeline. And I don't even like driving. I just want you to feel that pressure. That's all. When you're like, babe, what kind of car do you want? And I'm like, I don't know. Depends. Depends on how much you love me.